Just got to our hotel room in Oslo. This is the view. Pretty nice. But yeah, it's actually really nice out today. It's supposed to rain a lot, but it's beautiful. Check it out. For me, the hardest part about wrestling right now in my career is staying mentally present for 365 days a year. Every day, every second is treating every day like a professional. And that's what you have to do if you want to be the best. I started when I was about five years old. My dad wrestled for like a year or two in high school. So did my grandpa, but nobody ever really did it at a serious level. It was more just like for fun. I remember my dad, he came home with a flyer that was just for a local youth center. I didn't think much of it as a nonprofit organization. I never trained anywhere else. From the time I was five years old till I got here, so I never went to another practice room constantly. I never went to another coach to seek technique or anything like that. I uh, wrestled from, for him since I was five through 18, 19 years old. His name was Mark Halverson. He was the head coach at De La Salle High School, went to high school, and he was the head coach at the CYC, the Community Youth Center in Concord. And basically he was an Olympic level coach who just chose to give back to at-risk youth and try to mold young men. He pretty much put the Olympic team camp together in 2016, ran all the practices and did all that stuff. So I was lucky to have a coach like that just three miles away from my house growing up. He had a girlfriend named Linda. She had a place down in Orange County. Towards the end of his career, he was spending more time down there with her and her family. And, you know, he loved the beach. He loved how warm it was down there all year. And so just one weekend, you know, just normal weekend, went down there and um, in his sleep, he just had a heart attack and Lynn noticed that he was struggling, woke up, called the police and um, he had a heart attack. And by then it was just too late. Coach Alverson was a father figure in, in many ways to Peyton. Not just from a coaching standpoint, but he took Peyton under his wing at a young age and he corrected him when he was doing things wrong in life, not just wrestling. And th that's the unique relationship that they have amongst the two of them. Of course, you, you don't really believe it, you know? This person, to me, it was like he was immortal. When you get news like that, your heart just sinks to your stomach. It was really tough, especially like being in the middle of the season. I literally had talked to him the day before, which was even more kind of weird. It's just like a lot of emotions hit you. I had a, a real good support system here with my, my girlfriend and my dog and Chris and Roger and all my brothers here. They really helped me through it. They uh, stood by me, but it, definitely getting the news was just, I don't know, you can't even describe something like that. It's just pain and just, sorrow. There was no pressure for him to compete from our end. We gave him his time to kind of collect his thoughts. Once he uh, started to digest things, really understand what, what was going on, and he was able to clear his thoughts a little bit. I think he knew at the end of the day, Coach Halverson would want him to be competing. Peyton Omani is wrestling with a heavy heart. His Greco coach, Mark Halverson, passed away a few days ago. Oh, nice left-handed headlock here by Omania. It's a bad spot for Kane and Store Omania. Oh boy, this is a bad spot. The red shirt freshman looking to make some noise against Kane and Store. A lot of times you look at things and go, is there a bigger power out there? And you knew at that moment there was something bigger out there. And from from me personally, I, I knew Coach Halverson was with him at that moment in time, smiling down and kind of saying, hey, keep getting up, buddy. Keep getting up, keep attacking. Just think that on that day and at that time, that's just what was meant to happen. He, that was a, pretty much the first move I learned. That was his specialty, left side too, got two of them. It was just right. Greco Roman wrestling is based on throws. You can't grab legs. It's just all based on upper body throws. Folk style, the collegiate style, the, the style that you wrestle in the NCAA, was always kind of my secondary style growing up. Coach Halverson was a Greco fanatic. He, he loved Greco. That's kind of how I started wrestling. I went to a lot of age group trials when I was 16 is when I made my first US team. So I did that, cadets. I made two junior teams and two U23 teams. 
you start making age group teams and then keep building, keep getting better. And eventually by the time, you know, 20, 21 years old, you're in the mix for the seniors. And I was fortunate enough to make the senior team this year. First morning here, walk into practice. Um, yeah, it's my first time in New York. I flew from Grand Rapids to New York for nine days. This morning we had a recovery day. They brought in chiropractors and massage therapists and um, just worked on our bodies, worked on our minds. We did some light movement uh, training this morning, just real light stretching and stuff like that. We finished up camp in New York and we made it to Frankfurt, Germany. I didn't record the last couple days because I didn't really do much but train. Super jet lagged, super tired. And then after that, I flew to Oslo, Norway, and I spent another week there competing at the World Championships. I only made it to Norway. Yeah, we got our bags and everything, and now we're gonna shuttle over to the hotel. I'm not really sure of the quarantine period that we're gonna go through, but I, I feel good now that we're finally here, ready to kind of start focusing on the tournament. I knew the Olympics was a dream from the time I was probably six years old. Just the highest level of competition. It's crazy. Guys I've seen since I was real little, still going at it, still winning world titles. It's just kind of inspiring. You definitely have to be prepared and be on your A game. You need your best day 10 times out of 10. There is no just sneaking past anybody at the tournament. Everybody's really good. Leading up to the tournament, you know, I think I had a good weight cut. Me and Chris did a good job of managing that. And I felt great. It was, that's the worst thing in the world, right? You feel great. You, you feel like you prepared well. You feel like you, you did all the right things and then you get out there and I ended up losing to the guy from Azerbaijan. A lot of things go through your head. I don't think I was really down on myself at all. This is just always something to take away from it. There's nothing to, to cry and sulk about. It's just pick it up, move forward. You got something else in front of you, big 10 season on the clock, just turn around and focus on that. Just gotta continue evolving and continue to get better and work hard and eventually I'll get to where I wanna be. I think it's great to have goals, bigger goals than just being an All-American or NCAA champion. He has those goals and there's no doubt he can be an Olympic champion or Olympic medalist and be an Olympian himself for the United States. For me personally, I want kids like that within this program. It elevates the level of our program in every facet both from a competitive standpoint and from a mental standpoint. And that's, that's a big hurdle for every single competitor to overcome. Hey, that's tough, that's good. For me, the hardest part about wrestling right now in my career is going back and forth between styles, jumping between folk style and Greco because they're two completely different things. So it takes me a second. The next thing I would say is making weight pretty much year round. I don't really get much of a summer. I'm in here most days in the summer working, trying to complete my goals. I've had to adjust as a coach as well. It's our job as coaches to make sure he's in the best position to have success. Even though Mark isn't here physically, we always talk about the task. We wanted to be the best in the world. We wanted to be Olympic champ, world medalist. And we put everything into it. We, we tried to put literally every single day into it. Anything that we could do, film, conditioning, um, science, heart rate monitors, all that. Everything that we did together was working towards a goal of being the best in the world. I still feel him pushing me. I can still hear him. I know that I want to do this, not only for him, but for myself, because that's what we were gonna do, and that's what I'm gonna do. Every now and then, it's always good to, to look back and reflect. I am proud of how far I've come, and I know that the best is definitely yet to come. Down a bit. Doing a little photo shoot here for the boys, just a little chance to kind of express our uh, fashion personalities, kind of see what everyone's all about. Obviously there's different levels, some guys wearing suits, some guys dressing casual, it's just kind of more what we're feeling and, and the vibes we like, so we're just kind of getting a little uh, different look at the team and, and seeing what kind of goes on behind the scenes and, and how we like to dress. Uh, my grandma actually bought them for me, so school <laughs> Jags and Dennis, I'll say. Might blow up Jags' head too much though, so I don't know. Maybe he might have won today. He's a little nervous about the shorts though. He sees everyone's got pants on. Best dress on the team, that's a toss up. I mean, Mitty always has good outfits. Definitely not Nadler. Um, Jags has pretty good outfits. I like to think I dress pretty nice as well, so 
I don't know, we got a few guys that like to like to show a little style every once in a while. So it's, it's, it's a good little mix. Okay, now you can go hands right down to your side. Perfect. I'm pumped, dude. Jeeber! Zoom in on the ring, zoom in on the ring. Oh, get the ring. Yes, we did. Hi, baby. It's per pristine right now. <laughs> uh, I just kind of tried to go a little bit casual, a little bit nicer casual. I, I just got this pea coat and the scarf, so I figured I would rock it, and I like the way it turned out. <laughs> nice, that looks good, man. Think that? Oh, <laughs> that's tall. Oh. Thank you. Hey, I'm Hester Matilda Ek, and I come from Västerås in Sweden. I mean, basketball has just been a part of my life since I was born. Both my parents played, and they have been coaching me and my siblings. We just all played basketball growing up. Probably since I was like, I don't know, 10, playing pro has been my dream. When I was 15, I moved from home to another city in Sweden to go to a basketball high school. And I think that kind of helped me grow a lot, made me more mature and more independent. I played with the high school for two years, and then my third year at high school, I started to play with like a pro team. I play with a lot of players that has a lot of experience. The players I played against were like in their 30s. They have helped me grow as a player and as a person. I wanted to come to USA because I have a lot of friends that have been here earlier and a lot of friends that are here now. So I guess it's just from talking to them and hearing their experiences from being here and playing here. My recruiting process was kind of crazy. They reached out to me a couple of years ago. First couple of weeks we were just talking on the phone and then Susie came visit in Sweden. Then I was here visiting. I actually committed here and was supposed to come last year, but because of COVID, I didn't get my visa on time. From the Oval Office suspending travel from Europe to the U.S., the temporary ban kicks in Friday night. It was really difficult. I think there was a lot of foreign kids that couldn't play last year due to the pandemic. There were just travel bans. It was a worldwide problem, obviously, and so we fought pretty hard and tried every avenue we could, but she had to defer that year. I mean, I was looking forward to come here, and then when I realized I couldn't, I mean, it was kind of hard. This summer, me and my dad went to Poland to get my visa. I was just so relieved when I like finally got my visa and realized that I was actually able to come here. Cross it over, gets to the mid post, kicks out left corner, Eck knocks down the left corner three! Matilda Eck from downtown! I think Matilda's adjusted really well. She just plays her game, she can shoot it from anywhere, she can drive, I mean, she can just do it all. At first she was a little nervous about how good her English was, but I never thought it was an issue at all. I think she's really doing good, really fitting in well. Speaking English all the time has probably been like the biggest difference for me and like the hardest thing to adjust to. It's actually pretty difficult. I'm still not very comfortable speaking English, and I don't really feel like myself when I speak English. So that has been a big thing for me. Like, probably the biggest difference and, like, the hardest thing to adjust to. Basketball is kind of fun when it comes to English, because even in Sweden, we, like, talk a lot of English, like, on the court. And I've played with a couple of Americans, so basketball is fine. It's more like outside of basketball. In the left corner, X open for three, and buries it. Even though I'm now like very comfortable speaking English yet, I mean, I can tell the difference from when I first got here. Like the first couple of weeks, I kind of thought it was hard to understand sometimes, but now I'd say that I understand everything. It's just like the talking piece that's not as easy. Works her way inside underneath, passes into the right corner, X tries a three, book it. 
career day for Matilda at 27 points. Basketball in America is different than basketball in Sweden. Americans are very like skilled one-on-one -on -one players, both on offense and defense. They are probably better than most Europeans on one-on-one. -on -one. But European basketball is more like based on team things. And the tempo is different. I'd say that transition here is faster, but like the five-on-five -five is probably faster in Sweden. I'd say I'm still adjusting. I think everybody's helping me out because they're like used to this style of play. So I guess I just learned from practicing every day like with them, learning from how they want us to do it. She really just wants to improve and help the team. She doesn't care about all the distractions off the court. For us, I mean, she's just kind of a breath of fresh air. She's probably one of the most unselfish teammates I've ever had. She just wants what's best for the team. Just a great person, great player, great teammate. I mean, we're just really lucky to have her. The thing I love about basketball is that it's a team sport. They always have your team and teammates. Like, that's the biggest thing for me. It's just a special feeling to know like that we win as a team or lose as a team. You always have your team no matter what happens. So it's kind of hard to explain. It's just a special feeling. Basketball has had a lot of impact on my life. A lot of my major decisions in life have been because of basketball. The reason I moved when I was 15 was because of basketball. Also the reason why I got here is because of basketball. I mean, that has changed me. It's been great coming here. I didn't really know what to expect before I got here. I'm just happy that I feel like my coaches and my teammates believe in me and trust me. I think that's the biggest thing for me being in an environment where I feel like I'm being trusted and where I actually feel like I can develop. Make your name because it's the NCAA Pride League. It's a privilege to play it, and it's going to be a rim-rocking day today, all right? So we're going to play for 40 minutes. So when you focus in, I want the focus here. Diving on loose balls got us going in the Wisconsin game. Is ever ready to dive on the first loose ball? That's going to set the tempo. We're going to be the ones on that floor, okay? We're going to be on that floor. We're going to have our teeth on that floor. It's Michigan State, it's Michigan, and that's all you need to know. You throw the records out the door because both teams are going to come in here wanting this one more than any other game on the schedule, and it's huge. It's a huge one for the fans, it's a huge one for everyone around the state of Michigan, and it's a privilege to be here. I love this game. 189th all-time meeting between these two schools. It is Michigan and Michigan State. We're underway. Michigan State controls the tip. Bounce pass down low on the block to Bingham. Working, turn around, shot, good! Bingham Jr. 17 to go in the first half. We're all tied at four. Walker down the lane, bank shot away, good! That goes over to Christie. Seven on the shot clock. Christie, baseline, he drives, spins, shoots, high arch and shot, good! Well, MSU's defense has done a nice job. Michigan's only made one of its last seven shots. 9.25 to go between now and halftime. Christie open for a long one. He got it! And they found him! This could be a four-point trap! I talked about how he likes to win the matchup against talented freshmen. He's got nine right now. Caleb Houston for Michigan, only four. 33-32. Spartans by one, three to go. Christie, bounce pass. Top the circle of the road to Marvel. Now to Hall for another three. He got it! Yeah! And at the break, it's Michigan State 39, and Michigan's got 35. Three thirty-eight, biggest in the game for Michigan State. Now to Joey, wide open for a three. He got it. Here we go, down to Hauser, all by himself. Good. Now he gets the ball back. Here comes a three. He got it. Yes. Go 
Vegas there we go for Michigan State, 72, 53. The clock is winding down in the first of what we hope will be two meetings this season. We have a final from East Lansing, Michigan on this Saturday afternoon. And we're alive and well here as Michigan State beats Michigan, the final, 83 to 67. Did a hell of a job. Did a hell of a job. Joey, you bounced back. You know, you got your butt ripped and you came back tougher. You did a hell of a job. Marky, at times you were unbelievable. And, and Julius. And, uh, you know, you had your moments. But the day kind of goes to AJ a little bit. And, and, and uh,